Well, Charlotte was obviously much smaller. I wanted to be a real guy. I mean, this is where the action was, it's, it's Charlotte. We ought to consider consolidating the police force. No, I, I didn't, and I, it's probably personal. Everybody had their own reasons. We believe that we were better equipped. There wasn't, uh, you know, uh, clicks that you had to worry about. We're the best police department in the country, and, and that was built on foundations of prior chiefs. I'm Richard Van Root. I grew up in Charlotte. I was elected to the Charlotte City Council in 1983, and then eight years later, I was elected mayor of our city in 1991. Uh, one of my campaign themes at the time I was running for mayor was the consolidation of city and county government. Among the things that I talked about was the consolidation of our police forces. We had a rapidly expanding and growing city, and we had a, a growing smaller county uh, as the ring around the city uh, reduced in size every time we would annex more territory. And the county police had less and less to do. The county at that time, much of the county was a rural area. I mean, it would be the way um, Stanley County looks today is the way Mecklenburg County looked then outside 51. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was farm fields. I'm Pat McCrory, former city council member, mayor, and governor of North Carolina. Uh, and then somewhere, somehow, I ran into Fountain Odom, another lawyer who was on the county government, was county chairman, I think. Uh, and he began to say, I think you're right, that we ought to consider consolidating the police forces. Uh, and we've got to figure out some way to make it attractive to the county officials who don't like giving up anything that's important. I said, well, maybe we can figure out what it is you would like to have that we have and we could swap. And uh, voila, what we discovered was the county parks, city parks at the time that we would merge into the county and let them be the government of the parks, which were city and county, and we would be the government of the police force, city and county within the city of Charlotte. It never was a big problem for the city considering growing larger and taking on the entire police force. It was more of a, I think, a problem of manhood or something on the part of the county giving up its police force. The people in the rural areas were going, we don't want to be part of the urban centers and the urban crime, and we don't want to be involved in the city of Charlotte Police Department. So there was a trust issue that we had to deal with regarding can we trust the city of Charlotte if all the politicians are elected by the city of Charlotte? How can we trust that the police will serve us with the same capacity uh, that they serve the city of Charlotte? So there were issues of trust and communications that we had to spend a considerable amount of time working through. We finally got the ball across the goal line. Both governments agreed and we made that swap. And here we are today with a, a both very effective uh, both parks and and, and police law enforcement. The Chicago Police Department, at least uh, uh, even before I got there, but uh, uh, during my tenure and during a couple of subsequent tenures, uh, to me was the best department in the country. Um, I didn't come there really to solve any problems uh, after I, you know, maybe I, maybe the, the political leadership thought there might be some problems, but Charlotte was, um, uh, even uh, even with the merger already completed, you know, basically uh, announced and, and the, 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 the staff kind of merging, um, there was no big difficulties with merging it. There wasn't, uh, you know, uh, cliques that you had to worry about. There wasn't uh, incompetent leadership. In fact, I found pretty competent leadership when I got there. Crime was out of control. I mean, there were 10 young women who were killed in a short span of maybe a year or two with a serial killer that we was just driving everybody crazy, of course, when that happened in this city. And there were other things that made us think we we're about to become a big unsafe place and that's not who we want to be. Well, 1993, the crime issue was the number one issue and we had killing zones in Charlotte from the old Fairview homes, the Dalton Village to Earl Village. Literally, uh, we were averaging probably over 125 murders a year there was a crack heroin epidemic. A lot of young kids were getting killed. I had a lot of gang activity, much worse than it is today. Well, uh, really it was the violence, the violent crime. And, and it, was, it was sparked by the uh, drug issues, especially 
um, young people sell uh, open air drug markets, and that was that was really my focus because I was on the task force. And even when I was hired, you know, one of the questions was, "Why do you want to be a police officer?" And you know, my answer was, "I want to do my part in the war against drugs." There were two and three blocks scattered throughout the area, primarily in West Charlotte, that were killing zones, and um, and our police were in danger then too. We uh, lost Officer Nobles and Burnett. That was the lowest time I think we've ever had in our city, was when those two uh, great officers were shot and killed at the same time by the same individual. I mean, this city was in shock. There was a tremendous amount of pressure on the police department at the time. And this is when we were also, um, starting in the early 90s, we started uh, rolling out what we called community policing. It was an innovative change in the sense that uh, we led the way in um, developing a problem-oriented approach to policing. In some places, community policing means having bike patrol officers, which isn't community policing. What we did in Charlotte, uh, with, with the leadership we had uh, that, that, uh, that I worked with there, was to truly implement a community approach. And that meant working with not just the citizens, but other governmental agencies. People are now talking about it today, but it's actually rolling out uh, in the early 90s. The concept of getting police officers out of their car, getting them involved in the community, getting the community to know them, setting up satellite offices as opposed to having everything be downtown. That was the beginning because we were desperate. I think with the merger, the big challenge is one, it was, uh, it was difficult. It had never been done before. And we hadn't been, the, I say we, the the command level in the department hadn't gone through anything like this. So that was that. So we sat down and just listed the issues that we thought that would be there, a number of things we had to we had to work on. Uh, one was going to make, make sure we had great communications, both within the department, inter-department, and, and also uh, within the community itself uh, to keep people up to date. We wanted to make sure that concerns that the officers had, and quite frankly, it, the uh, the administrative level or the command level, there were some issues there that seemed fairly big, but a lot of them seemed smaller in a sense. But we knew that these were, these were major issues for the officers and the civilians in the department. There were a lot of conversations. Um, you had to work out the rank structure. Um, obviously, they stayed in the county building briefly. Um, it was just a lot of administrative operational um, mergers that took a few years to really become one, one organization. But uh, Chief Nowicki, when he says it's going to happen, uh, it's going to happen, regardless. And, uh, and it did, and here we are. And you would hear some discussions, none of, most of them fairly good nature, that, you know, well, we didn't do it that way. We, we did it better in the uh, Mecklenburg County uh, Police Department uh, than you guys did it, and vice versa. Those kind of things uh, were overheard by me, but not, none of the point where I had to intervene or take any corrective action. I think the first year or two, there was a lot of distrust, a lot of lack of communication because I don't think they really trusted us very much. And, you know, like I said, we were so busy in homicide, I don't even think that was a thing. But I think outside of our unit, I think there was a lot of distrust and a lot of non-communication so I don't think there was a ton of uh, learning from each other that went on immediately. It was really two organizations for the first couple of years and then we did a redistricting mm -hmm. and then they became a part of um, true policing. Yeah the merger took about five years for things to really gel together. It was you know talked earlier about people's opportunities to move back and forth and to go into area a different zone or a different geographical area um, and, and there, was a lot, there were a lot of people that were still trying to find their way, and a lot of leadership also were in the same boat. So a captain might have found themselves moving from a very rural area to a very urban area, and that's not in your wheelhouse of experience. And likewise for the officers. So you know, they, th that forces you to start learning and working again with others to try and, and find your way and, and make things work. There was a little anxiety about what is it going to look like. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I believe that my attitude and, and those around me was more 
uh, that this could be a positive thing to have you know one police department uh, for the entire county. Uh, and uh, you know I just remember some of the talks about who's going to benefit more from the merger of the city or the county. Uh, what's going to happen is the county, are they going to get to keep their take-home cars? Are they going to get more money? Uh, so all of those conversations were taking place, but I, I never truly remember any uh, animosity towards it or uh, people that were against the merger. It was a lot of just wondering, you know, what are the next steps for, for this agency? I was personally a little skeptical. and. Um, I think a lot of us were more thinking about how will this impact me personally? Will I lose my position? Um, in 1993, I was a detective in homicide. And so a lot of us were worried that we might lose our, our current position and either get sent back to patrol or get reallocated in another division or something. I felt a little more freedom, I guess, more area. Uh, I thought the way that we did things on the county side was a little bit different. It was uh, it was our way of community policing, which was uh, a little different. Uh, once we merged, you know, it was a lot of adaptation to trying to conform and do things the way that it was done in the inner city and the county area, combining the two. For me, it didn't really matter if you were uh, a, a former county officer or city officer, but to a lot of folks, it mattered. And so in some conversations that I would have with people, uh, they'd say, well, well, he was a county guy or, or she was from the city or, you know, just sort of, uh, just sort of like uh, we were different. As, as a newer officer, I'd had a year and change in with the county when the merger was announced and things started to, to change for us. Uh, certainly some concern about what was going to happen, right? Uh, because. Once I had joined the county police department and I saw the environment and the group of people that were there had really good leadership, had a really good team aspect to it. Everybody took care of each other. And so there was some concern about how we would be absorbed and accepted in on the city side. Well, we heard a lot of rumbling upstairs from the executive staff and everybody else. So if you have, if you have chiefs and deputy chiefs, and they have chief and deputy chiefs, who would be the chief? and then who would be the deputy chief. And then um, we knew it was gonna be an issue of removing um, some chiefs from their position and then the merger. Um, we were concerned as detectives um, at that time when we had the merger, I, I was a detective. What would the merger look like? It was good, I think, in the end for both sides because officers who were just used to working in the inner city got to work the out of bounds and realized that it was a lot more to the county than they thought. A lot of officers thought, oh, all county officers do is answer burglar alarms and cattle calls. And they found out that you have the same problems in the county that you do the city. Also, we had a lot more territory and things to deal with, such as you had McGuire Nuclear Plant, you have Lake Norman, you got Lake Wiley, you got Mountain Island, so we had a boat patrol. Whereas officers on the county were not investigating and asking as many calls for service so they had to learn to adapt to more calls per day, and the investigators had to learn to adapt to more cases that they were, and especially homicides, because, of course, we didn't deal with the number of homicides in the county as they did in the city. At the end of the day, I, I believe that my attitude and, and those around me was more uh, that this could be a positive thing to have you know, one police department. Looking back on it, it had to happen, um, and I think of no chief who could have done it better than the wiki. You know, we needed somebody who's going to tell you what's going to happen and going to make sure it happened and um, make sure you, you followed suit. We had to have that personality to make it work. It was a perfect timing and uh, it had to be done. One of the biggest problem areas for me as the chief was to convince uh, the leadership in the smaller communities of the value of being policed by a uh, full service police department. I wanted to bring more of those resources back to the community and, and quite naturally that wasn't, you know, looked upon very favorably within the organization. But we have always been on the forefront of, of technology to be able to take those steps forward that other agencies may be reluctant to take.